everybody, my name is Tanya and this is my November wrap up. So I'm filming this one a bit earlier than I usually do. Quite often it takes me quite a long time to get around to filming my monthly wrap ups. Uh, mostly I film on weekends, or pretty much exclusively I film on weekends. Um, and, you know, things have been going on. But I'm filming this on the 30th of November, so a bit early, because this is the last opportunity I have to film this video. So tomorrow on the 1st I am flying to New Zealand. I'm going to be in New Zealand for a few weeks. Um, I come back just before Christmas and if I don't film it now I won't get to film this until after Christmas most likely. So I thought I would do it a little bit early. There's a couple of things that I'd hope to finish today before filming this video that isn't going to happen. I still hope to finish them today um, but they'll have to wait until my December wrap up because I can't wait any longer to film this. So my November continued to be quite an interrupted reading month. I don't have many things to talk about here. As I said, there are a few things that I'm working on at the moment that I should hopefully finish by the end of today. Um, but at this stage, I've only completed three things during the month. So I'm going to talk about those here and let's just get into it. So the first book I completed during the month of November was an audiobook, and that was this one, which is The Return of the Native by Thomas Hardy. This one I read on the recommendation of Alicia from Ex Libris. I was looking through my Audible app trying to pick out what I would listen to next. I didn't really have any set idea of where I was going next. Um, and I thought maybe I would read another Thomas Hardy. I've been watching Alicia and Angie Yamini read Thomas Hardy a month this year. And a few years ago now I listened to and really adored Tess of the Durbils. Um, and I meant to read some more by him. So I thought maybe I would give another Thomas Hardy a try. So I asked Alicia out of The Return of the Native or The Mayor of Casterbridge, which one should I pick up next? And she said The Return of the Native. And so I did and I'm very pleased that I did because I really love this. So this one I listened to the audio version narrated by the wonderful Alan Rickman, which was perfection. It's of course particularly poignant after his death. Um, but he did a fantastic job. So if you have the opportunity to listen to this one with audio, I would definitely recommend you go that route. I kind of went into this not really knowing anything about it. I remember Alicia speaking about this one very highly when she read it, but a lot of the finer detail about what this was actually about had gone at this point. Um, and so I went in completely blind. I didn't read the blurb. Um, I just drove on into this world and was swept up and loved it. So I don't want to talk too specifically about what this is about uh, in a lot of regards. I think it was great kind of diving in. So this one is essentially following the story of Eustacia Bai, who is quite a headstrong young woman. Um, she's quite passionate. She dreams for more. She's living with her grandfather up on the heath and in quite an isolated area. Um, they're quite simple people living around them and she's kind of dreaming and longing for something more. She dreams of Paris. She dreams of big cities. Um, she dreams of you know something more for her life and so she's quite uh, volatile she's quite eccentric she has the reputation um, in the local area of being a witch because she's you know that little bit different um, and so she's a very passionate person um, and as we open and again I don't think I really want to talk about what um, as we open she's involved in something that made me wonder are we meant to like her or not and that kind of continued through most of this um, as to whether you know we're meant to like you Stacey or not whether she's really a good person but she is a wonderfully compelling character to read about and so following you Stacey she kind of chafes against the restrictions that are placed on her and you know her dreams of more uh, then another um, side of this story, the native of the title uh, is Clemio Bright, who is the son uh, of somebody living in this area. He left before Eustacey arrived in the area, she doesn't know him, um, but he's been, you know, making his life in Paris um, and living that life that she feels that she wants. And he comes home to spend time with his family and uh, their paths cross. There's also a lot of other characters kind of intertwined. It's very much a story of um, passion, it's very much a story of. Uh, horrible misunderstandings it's a story of heartbreak and despair and happiness and just oh there's there's a lot going on in this one um, it's quite dramatic and maybe even melodramatic at points um, but it's a complete ride and I just loved every minute of it like I said there's a lot of heartache in this one a lot of really horrible misunderstandings you know just if something was a little bit different or if uh, you know, the time was slightly different, things would work out differently, but it's a Thomas Hardy, so you know that there's going to be, 
you know, it's probably going to get worse before it gets better. Um, but still, you root for these characters and you want a happy ending. And I really enjoyed the way this one did wrap up. Um, there is a lot that goes on to get there. I really appreciated the way that it did wrap up in the end. Um, I think it's quite fitting. I really loved the characters in this one. There are some very complex characters, I guess. Um, you stay to yourself is a very complex woman, but there are some other you know, people and motivations that I think are very fascinating with this one and I very much enjoyed the experience of reading it and I would highly recommend it. Then the next book I completed was something that took me a lot longer than I had expected but that's okay and that is The Two Towers by J.R. Tolkien, the second part of The Lord of the Rings. Um, this just it's wonderful. For all that I didn't read this one as fast as I maybe expected. Um, I loved every minute of this and I'm just still totally loving finally being back in this world and rereading uh, Lord of the Rings. It's just been glorious. As I said with The Fellowship of the Ring, I think I'm going to hold off really talking about this until I finish The Return of the King. Um, I had hoped to finish that in November as well um, and I started it a few days ago but I've kind of put it on hold decided there might be something nice to you know driving around the countryside of New Zealand and reading Lord of the Rings. There's really something fitting in that so I've um, held off and I'm going to restart that one probably on the plane tomorrow and then read that through the New Zealand countryside and pretend that I'm in the Shire and it'll be wonderful. So I'm going to hold off talking about this until then um, but you know five out of five stars absolutely loved it just it's it's wonderful. And then the final book that I've actually completed for the month of November is this one. This is A Pocket Full of Rye by Agatha Christie and yes I finally finished an Agatha Christie again. So this is one that I've been trying to read for months. I have realised that I miscalculated somewhere along the way and thought I was further behind than I actually am. Um, but I think this was actually my July read, not my May read. So I don't have quite so many to finish in this last month. But I've still got quite a lot of Agatha Christie's to read in not much space of time. And for three weeks of that I'm going to be quite busy and not sure whether I'll be able to focus on reading or not. But I'm still hoping that I will be able to finish my 12 Agatha Christie's for the year. But to talk about A uh, Pocket Full of Rye, I think because I have been trying to read this for so long and I restarted on three separate occasions, I didn't care for this one as much as some others. And I think that's probably a case of it's me, not the book. And that, you know, I, I started it so many times, I was distracted every time I was trying to read it and it, it's just not conducive to that enjoyment. Uh, but I'm very pleased that I've now finally read this one and can kind of move forward with that journey. Um, and I would like to revisit this at some point in the future to see if I get a different experience with it because I'm sure the book itself is great. I just had trouble um, every time I came to try and read it. So this is one of her Miss Marvel mysteries, um, although again in true Miss Marvel fashion she doesn't really turn up until halfway through the novel and I think it definitely picked up from then for me, um, probably because the start I'd read a few times over um, I was coming to care less about that anyway but I think it, the story definitely did pick up once Miss Marvel arrived on the scene, although she was still you know in the background in a true Miss Marvel fashion. A Pocket Full of Rye is the story of a man named Rex Fortescue who has uh, like a violent attack in his office uh, and later dies and it's found that he was poisoned and the poison must have been administered during his breakfast and so we're uh, studying his family situation. Rex Fortescue has recently remarried a much younger woman, um, he's got two sons and a daughter, one of his sons is involved in his business and the other one is estranged. Uh, there's also an old aunt of his first wife I think living in the house so there's quite a number of people in and around that may be involved and quite a lot of people that maybe have a motive for his murder and so it goes on from there and the local police are detecting and then kind of further developments in the case mean that Miss Marple gets involved and she comes to to hear of this and that she knows somebody that is involved in some way and she arrives on the scene and of course points everyone in the right direction it is Miss Marple who realises that uh, the method of the crime kind of rings true with a certain uh, rhyme, <laughs> the pocketful of rye of the title, and so there's some kind of resemblance to four and twenty blackbirds baked in a pie. As I said, the second half of this was definitely a lot better and I enjoyed the way it played out um, and there were some really fascinating characters in this one. Um, uh, but overall I didn't connect with it all that much. I think it was definitely me but not the book. So. I would still definitely recommend this one and it's something I would like to revisit it in the future when I've read everything and go back to rereading and see what I think about it then. 
So as I said, that's everything that I've completed up until this point, but there are still two things that I hope to finish today. The first one of those is my next Agatha Christie. This is Destination Unknown. I'm currently halfway through this. I had planned on curling up with this and reading it before I filmed this wrap up, but that hasn't happened. I'm in the midst of packing at the moment, um, so I'm a little bit sidetracked, but I am hoping I can finish this tonight so I don't have to take it with me in some form. I picked up uh, e-copies of the next few Agatha Christie's that I have to read and also The Return of the King. So I've got those on an e-reader that I'm bringing with me. I'm not bringing any physical books on the trip because I don't want them to get damaged um, and an e-reader can fit them all in one. Um, so I don't want to have to pick this one up as well. I want to finish this today, but it will have to wait until my December wrap up. And then the other thing that I'm hoping I might finish today, or at least I will finish tomorrow on the way to the airport, is something I've been working on for a long time. But again, we'll have to wait till my December wrap up, unfortunately. And that is this one. This is Dombey and Son by Charles Dickens, which I've been reading as a buddy read with Alicia from Ex Libris. Um, although Alicia finished a long time ago and I've been lagging behind, as is my want, but I've been particularly distracted this month. Um, but as I said, I've only got a couple of hours to go on this one now, so I'm almost there. It is an absolute chunker, so there's no wonder it's been taking me for so long. So I'll be talking about this one in my December wrap up as well. So as I said, I'm going to be away now for three weeks. I'll have this video scheduled to go up while I'm away, as well as one other that I've got organised. I'd hope to be able to film a third video and get that up, um, so there would be a video a week while I'm away, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I'm running out of time. Um, I've still got to get this one edited and up, so um if there's a bit of a gap that is why uh likewise if i'm not responding to comments quite so frequently although i'm pretty bad at doing that anyway um but i might not be able to reply to all comments i'll see how i go um but if i disappear for a little while again that is why i might have some updates to twitter or instagram i'm not quite sure at this stage what i'm going to be uh doing while i'm there um but i am going to be in new zealand for the next few weeks and if all else fails i will see you again after christmas those are the three things that I've been able to complete so far during the month of November. If you've read any of these ones, let me know what you thought of them. Uh, and as always, thank you all for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye. It's really a story. <laughs> really?